In this fourth chapter of the Small Intestine Saga, I'm going to be talking a bit about functional ileus, uh, kind of as a counterpoint to the mechanical ileus from parts two and three. And a functional ileus is, as this sign would suggest, a slowing down of the small intestine. A functional ileus represents decreased peristalsis of the small intestine, which results in a slowing down of, of the transit through the small intestine, but without any sort of concrete physical obstruction to the flow of material in the lumen. Usually it's a diffuse condition, although occasionally uh, there can be focal or regional functional ileus. The more common causes of functional ileus are honestly the most common causes of vomiting and diarrhea in our patients. So gastroenteritis is a big one, uh, often due to dietary indiscretion, uh, can be secondary to trauma and irritation from passing foreign material, again, without obstruction. Uh, infectious causes are also uh, on that list, viral, bacterial, parasitic. Uh, peritonitis or pancreatitis can cause secondary functional ileus due to the surrounding effects. Uh, mural lesions will also result in a functional ileus, so inflammatory bowel disease and round cell neoplasia are on that list, uh, and I'll talk about those more in chapter 5 of this lecture series. There are a ton of other causes of functional ileus, though. Uh, metabolic disease is an important one, uh, anything from electrolyte imbalance to hypothyroidism. Neurologic disease, I'm skipping ahead just a little bit, um, is another one. It's not very common. Muscularis layer atrophy, not very common. Uh, the one I skipped is, is important uh, and looks a little bit different from the other ones. I'm going to talk about it separately. Um, and that's vascular compromise or ischemia, most commonly due to mesenteric volvulus, although thromboembolic disease or strangulation can also do this. Um, and again, these are not common, but it's a much more severe and life-threatening situation, so I'm going to cover them again uh, after I talk about some of the more typical versions of a functional ileus. As far as what we see radiographically, a functional ileus is going to have diffuse dilatation of the small intestine, and it's usually mild. Uh, and that's, again, in contrast to what we see with a mechanical ileus, where it is a more focal dilatation and usually more severe. And as you can see with the yellow words, I've, I've kind of gone a little nuts with the yellows on this one, but um, key points here, functional ileus may look radiographically normal. So if there's a patient who has clinical signs, GI signs, and has a normal looking GI tract as far as the radiographs go, that dog probably, or cat, still has a functional ileus most likely. Uh, so again, when we see signs, it's usually diffuse, usually a mild degree of distension. Uh, as with those I had mentioned on those previous slides or that previous slide, uh, ischemia will have a much more severe appearance and, and again I'll get back to that later. Another thing that we'll see in a functional ileus is an alteration in the gas and fluid proportion. So remember that a dog should be about 50-50 gas fluid, a cat is going to be a lot more fluid. And so in a functional ileus, uh, you may see a patient have more gas or more fluid than is typical, um, although that's certainly not a very specific or reliable finding. Um, and obviously this is important. Once again, small intestine can look normal. So it can look normal, it can look mildly dilated, uh, diffusely. Um, so again, we're on the mild end of the spectrum is, is what I'm going for here. When there's a functional ileus, it's usually pretty tough to really get to a definitive diagnosis because there are a lot of causes of functional ileus, as those few slides before uh, showed, and a lot of them don't have real specific findings beyond being a functional ileus. So remember radiographically, we need to differentiate diseases that need surgery and those that don't. And so in the camp of functional ileus, those diseases that need surgery are mesenteric volvulus and, and its ilk, and then mechanical ileus, again, the non-functional ileus cases, those are the ones that need surgery. And so our chief aim is to recognize, is this a typical functional ileus? And if the answer is yes, then we're gonna medically manage those mostly the same. Now we can talk about doing endoscopy or other things if, if you're concerned about inflammatory bowel disease. Um, but generally speaking, once we've defined it as a, a typical functional ileus, surgery is off the table, and then we can figure out how we want to manage the case from there. Do remember that we can affect the GI tract. Uh, so there are a number of other conditions that will give the appearance of a functional ileus that can be iatrogenic, can be unrelated to the patient's clinical signs. 
So anything from sedation to stress to aerophagia from panting um, or respiratory disease, uh, even the effects of abdominal palpation can affect the the gas fluid sort of uh, proportions can cause mild distension of the GI tract. Uh, so all of those things can look like a functional ileus and may or may not be related to the patient's actual clinical signs. Also remember from previous mentioning, previous discussion, that a very distal small intestinal obstruction may not look as severe and thus can look like a functional ileus as well. So what does a typical functional ileus actually look like in real life? This patient is vomiting, it's a younger dog, and it's, in the grand scheme of things, not that exciting looking. There are some intestinal segments that are a little bit bigger, but I think those are large intestine. Most of the small intestine is a little bigger than normal, and it's all kind of gassy, but it's not that huge. You know, when I compare it to vertebral bodies, it's not 1.6 or two times the height of, of L5. Uh, it's mildly distended, but it's relatively uniform and relatively diffusely affected. So because there's one population of small intestine, again, all about the same diameter, uh, it's all diffusely affected, this is a functional ileus, and it's all mild, um, this is a functional ileus. VD view, we have the same look. There's a little bit of variation in diameter, but not beyond what would be expected for a normal patient or a patient with a functional ileus. Again, certainly not two populations of small intestine. Nothing is severely distended. Uh, we can see where the cecum and the colon are a little bit, and so this is compatible with a nonspecific functional ileus with all the differentials that go with that. Here's a cat, same sort of story. Uh, there is an intestinal segment here cranially that if it were small intestine would be concerning, but it's in the right spot for large intestine. And in fact, uh, I can follow large intestine back with the fecal material there. So that is definitely large intestine. Uh, everything else is uniform, maybe slightly dilated, but not by much. A little more gassy perhaps than is typical in a cat. Um, but again, not profound distension, only one population of small intestine. So this again is gonna be compatible with a functional ileus whether that's enteritis, whether that's secondary to some metabolic disease, uh, I don't know, but it is not indicative of something that's gonna require surgery. When you do an upper GI series on a patient with a functional ileus, one thing we would expect to see is a delayed transit time or an increase in the time it takes uh, for the contrast medium to travel all the way through the small intestine. Most of the time we don't see any morphologic abnormalities. Occasionally you'll see a little bit of irregularity of the mucosa if there's some enteritis and it's severe enough, but, but that's even that's fairly uncommon. Uh, we do see some other kind of secondary changes sometimes. Uh, our barium suspension will get clumped when there's hemorrhage or pH change or excess mucus, all of which go along with enteritis and other causes of functional ileus. Uh, so sometimes that's kind of a secondary marker of a functional ileus, but we don't see a whole lot of real exciting change with this. And this is what flocculation looks like, uh, just kind of clumping and irregularity of the contrast medium. It's not that nice uniform column that we see in normal patients. So here is a dog. We probably had pretty boring looking survey radiographs, but we wanted to make sure there was nothing going on as far as you know proximal duodenal obstructions or something like that. So we did an upper GI series and it's not very exciting. You can see that the diameter of the small intestine is pretty uniform. There is contrast medium going all the way through the small intestine. There are a couple of spots that have a little bit of irregularity to them, um, but it's not much more than the normal fimbriation, so uh, this may be normal. Again, maybe a slight irregularity, um, but nothing too compelling, so would fit with a functional ileus, you know, virtually normal in appearance. I'll zoom in and show some of those irregularities. Again, it's, it's virtually the same as the fimbriation, so I'm not going to get too worked up about it. But let's shift gears here to the mesenteric volvulus. So this is in that category of cases that are technically functional ileus. It is still a functional ileus, which is why I'm talking about it in this part, but it is very different from the gastroenteritis sort of cases. Uh, in a mesenteric volvulus, there's a twist of the mesentery on its root. Um, we usually don't know why. It's kind of like gastric dilatation and volvulus. And what that does is, is it occludes the cranial mesenteric artery. And so there is ischemia of 
the small intestine, usually most of the, virtually the entirety of the small intestine. Um, and so as it necrosis, it's going to rapidly and severely distend with gas usually. Um, you get that ischemic necrosis, you get toxin releases, bacterial translocation across the mucosa, um, the patient gets shocky. Uh, it is definitely a life-threatening situation, a very severe um, situation that ultimately has a fairly poor prognosis for outcomes. It is a functional ileus because there's a loss of motility because of the ischemia, but there's no actual obstruction to the flow through the lumen. The lumen's not obstructed. The lumen is wide open. Um, in fact, it becomes more dilated, um, but that dilation is secondary to the inability of the small intestine to function because it has no blood flow. Um, that said, that's not the most important part. The most important part is that this is a surgical emergency. It is severely dilated. Uh, the dog's going to die. Again, usually dogs, not so much in cats. Um, and prognosis is poor. We have to go to surgery now, but even then the patient may not make it. What we see, I just alluded to, severe and diffuse distension of the small intestine with gas. Um, given enough time, it'll get to be fluid filled. Uh, I've only seen one case that has gone that far. Um, some of the small intestinal segments may have sharp hairpin turns, um, although that can be difficult to see because you end up with so many gassy loops all superimposed on each other. There aren't a lot of differentials when you see this severe of a case. Um, other events, other ischemic events like thrombosis can do this, incarceration and a mesenteric rent. Theoretically, a distal obstruction can look like this. Um, usually that's not the case because these are a lot more severe than those distal, um, those distal obstructions in terms of distension of the small intestine. And usually a distal obstruction that lasts long enough to get this distended is going to be chronic and thus more fluid filled. So this, the, the degree of degree of distension, the gassy nature of it, um, and the extensiveness of it all speak to it being a severe functional ileus, a severe uh, ischemic event. And so there's just kind of more of what I said. Uh, it's for your notes, for your, for your studying. So this is a mesenteric volvulus, or again, other diffuse ischemia of the small intestine. You can see severe distension of the small intestine, multiple times taller, more di greater diameter than the midpoint of the L5 body. Um, it's diffuse, really the entirety of the small intestine is affected, and it's all very gassy, suggesting it's a very acute process. This isn't some chronic obstruction that's finally gotten to this degree of distension. This happened all of a sudden. So again, your differentials relate back to some sort of ischemic event, and mesenteric volvulus is the most common of those. Here's what it looks like on the VD view, very similar. This dog needs to go to surgery. So that's it for the functional ileus. We've got one more chapter to go. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, wall diseases, uh, which will in part roll back to some of what we talked about with functional ileus.